Hello everybody, I'm Fred HK and I'm a new content creator for Guided Hacking. I'll be creating videos for the channel based on Maui reversing, programming and pen testing. I look forward to your feedback and I hope you enjoy the video. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Paradise Clipper malware. Paradise Clipper is a crypto tracking malware that replaces cryptocurrency addresses that have been copied to the victim's clipboard. These addresses will be replaced with the threat actor's address so that the victim will unintentionally send their funds to the threat actor's wallet. I'd like to give a shout out to Fumiko on Twitter for bringing this malware to my attention. The unique features of this malware is that it reaches out to a C2. Crypto jackers don't commonly do this as they don't need any commands besides the addresses that the victim's clipboard will be replaced with. We'll be concentrating on the C2 in a future video. But for this video, I want to take a look at some of the functionalities of the malware to get us started. The developer of the malware has provided a video to demonstrate it. Let's take a look. So we're now going to watch the video. Within the video, we see a few things of interest. First, the threat actor logs into the web panel. The web panel shows the victims and whether they're online. It also displays the infection date and the last time when the victim was online. Some other information is displayed, such as the location and the malware version. We then see the operator of the malware copying and pasting crypto addresses, which are replaced by the malware. Within the C2, it will show when an address has been replaced, along with what was replaced and its replacement. Also displayed in the panel on the left-hand taskbar is a Discord tokens page, which seems to be unavailable. This could be a possible future feature which may be coming to the malware. Let's go ahead and begin analyzing Paradise Clipper. I'll begin my analysis of Paradise Clipper by taking the binary and dropping it into Detect It Easy. Detect it easy is a tool which gives an overview of a binary and will tell you about what the binary is programmed in, whether it was packed, the hash of the binary and the strings that are found within the binary. The software tells me that the program was written in Microsoft Visual C++. It does not detect any packing or encryption, which can be seen usually under the linker. To see whether the malware has been packed or not, it would be a good method to first check the import of the malware. Within the import, we see a few DLLs have been loaded and quite a few different functions being loaded from these DLLs. This indicates that the malware is not being packed, and we can also see in the user32 DLL some functions that will open the clipboard, set the clipboard, and get the clipboard contents. These are likely being used by the crypto jacker functionality. Now, let's go ahead and look at the strings in the binary. Because I know what the C2 domain is, I'm going to go ahead and look for the C2 domain. We can see that we find some URLs on the C2 along with the PDB file which we'll take a look at later. For now, I'm going to close the strings window, but we'll come back to it further on in the video. Let's proceed to open the binary NIDA. On the left-hand side, within the functions window, we can see a function titled main. Scrolling through the main function, we see quite a few functions that are of interest, but we'll touch on these later. Let's first discuss what functionalities we will be taking a look at within this video. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the persistence of the malware, also the crypto jacking functionality of the malware. Within future videos, I'll concentrate on other functionalities of this malware, but let's go ahead and look at how the malware carries out its persistence. The malware carries out a few functions to become persistent on the victim's machine. Firstly, the malware will take a few strings and concatenate them together. The concatenated strings will be used in a call to system which will execute them in a command process. Instead of manually concatenating them through the output of IDA, I'm going to open up the binary in my debugger and set a breakpoint as to where this, uh, these concatenated strings are used. So I've gone ahead and done this and ran the program until it hits this breakpoint. And I can take that final string, which is kept in the stack, and copy it into a text editor so that I can read it easier. I've already done this and cleaned it up a little bit, so let's get to analyzing this string. We see that the final string used can be observed that the command first pings localhost and then copies itself into local app data. It then sets the parameters of the copy binary to disallow anyone from modifying 
it or deleting it. This is achieved by first calling the attribute command with the parameters of h, r, and a. The h is for hidden, which as the name implies, hides the file. The r is for read-only, meaning that the malware cannot be modified. And then lastly, the a is to indicate that the file is an archive. Once the attrib command has been called, the malware then calls the icacls command, which denies anybody from modifying the binary. It'll then delete the original binary which was ran and start up the newly copied one. Once these commands are finished, then the process will exit. In general, this is simply just moving the binary to somewhere that it's harder to find and then stopping it from being deleted by a user, which is actually quite efficient. And you'll see a lot of malware doing this. So once this command has finished executing, the malware will create a registry key within this path pointing to the location of the copy binary. So this registry key will define where programs should start at the booting of Windows OS. Once the persistence is finished, the malware will check in with the C2, which we'll discuss in a future video. So let's move on now to the crypto jacking functionalities. I'll now discuss the crypto jacking functionality. From what I've observed by watching the C2 video, I can see that the Paradise Clipper malware does not retrieve the crypto addresses from the C2, meaning that the crypto addresses are somewhere embedded in the binary. Because I was able to see the C2 URL within the strings of the binary, it would be a good idea to first check whether the crypto addresses are within the strings of the binary. I can check this within either IDA or Detect Easy. I'm going to check in IDA because it sometimes does a better job with finding strings and will show me references and the location of the string. This is the crypto address for the LTC cryptocurrency, and the addresses for this cryptocurrency usually begin with LTC. So double-clicking into the first result, we can see the string within the data section of the binary. And looking around, all of the other crypto addresses are also stored in the same section, making it easy for us to extract and find these crypto addresses, which I'll automate in a future video. Scrolling down, see what else we find, there appears to be some regex strings, which are used for when the malware checks the content of the clipboard for crypto addresses. All right, in the imports, let's search for the get and set clipboard functions, which we saw being imported within Detector Easy. And I'm gonna click on the get clipboard sequence number. Then once it opens the function, we can see that it's being used within main. So I'll double click on this and decompile. Now, this is a good way of finding out where the crypto jacking functionality is carried out. The malware does a few checks before it replaces the contents of the clipboard. The first check is to get the clipboard sequence number, which is an indication of whether the clipboard has changed. If the clipboard has changed, then the malware will continue with its next check. The next check is to see if the contents of the clipboard match a given crypto regex, which we looked at earlier. If it does match, then this malware will iterate through all of the stored crypto addresses to see whether the clipboard content matches any of them. If it does, then this means that the malware has already replaced the clipboard. I'll open my debugger and run through this functionality to show you it recursively going through each of the cryptocurrency addresses. We're specifically looking here, as we can see already, there's a cryptocurrency address here. As I've ran the malware once through, I will run it again until we hit the breakpoint, and we can see that this cryptocurrency address has changed. If I continue running it, then we'll see all of the cryptocurrency addresses that the malware has embedded. Now that the malware has checked that the clipboard contents are valid to be replaced, it will proceed to empty the clipboard and set the clipboard with a matching cryptocurrency address that the malware operator is choosing successfully stealing the victim's cryptocurrency. Once this has occurred, it will then call out to the C2 and tell the C2 that it has successfully replaced the cryptocurrency address. We'll be taking a look at this in a future video. That's all for this video. I hope this was a good introduction to the Paradise Crypto Jacking Malware, and I hope that you may have something to take away from this video. In the next videos, I'll be looking at analyzing the C2 traffic and how to emulate it. Then we'll look at how to extract the cryptocurrency addresses from the binary automatically. Thank you all very much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next video. Goodbye.